they're not epoxied in there or retained in any way, so it's sliding a little bit, um, which is not a terrible failure right now. That's kind of, that's okay. If that's what's failing, I'm in good shape. So. The first prototype proved out the zigzag revolver concept, but one of the first issues that I discovered is the chamber inserts were not well secured in the zigzag housing. Under recoil, they would slide back and forth in the zigzag shell. When one of the cylinder inserts would jam up against the frame, the gun would stop running. My first solution was to drill and tap the chambers, but that introduced alignment issues, so my current solution is to use set screws. The biggest change between prototype 1 and 2 was the frame. The initial prototype's frame was a pair of 5 16 rods. They were spaced not terribly far apart. They were yielding as I shot the gun, particularly upside down. In some of the video clips and stills, you can see the frame flex a lot. So I upgraded those to half inch bolts and spaced them apart for better lateral stability. I also upgraded from pipe to 4130 tubing. You can still make the revolver with an angle grinder, but you need to start with a decent steel. Another major change was the addition of a crane to swing the cylinder out so it can be reloaded. A swing out cylinder on a crane needs a locking mechanism. The current solution is a spring-loaded latch, which I think is a pretty elegant solution and requires very few parts. And I'm definitely getting some gas hitting me in the shoulder, in the, in the forearm. But it's not, eh, I don't know. So the cylinder gap gas is really pretty substantial. While I've had worse injuries fighting with blackberries, it's something that I want to put a shield around and protect my arm from. frying pan into the fire. It was at this moment I realized all revolvers have a rear blast shield. This is the kind of stuff I might just know if I was a trained gunsmith. If you load all six chambers, the problem goes away. Now that I'm out of background music, I'm going to show you the buckshot test which broke this zigzag cylinder shell. Since then I've beefed up the cylinder and added a lot more wall thickness and the print in the first place was not super great. It did break the cylinder, it didn't destroy the gun otherwise. I think it would have been safe to shoot once and then it wouldn't have cycled. Thanks for watching. Welcome all of you who are new, especially those of you from SHOT Show. I know many of you are eagerly awaiting the release of the files. It'll be done when it's done and when it's done it'll be safe for you to use. At least that's the idea. Don't quote me on that or sue me. Because if you hurt yourself, I'm going to be really choked up. There could be tears.